together. Lord, we thank you in the middle of the week for this reminder that you are almighty, great and mighty, and how mighty almighty. And when you tell us to do something that's too big for us, and that happens a lot, rather than just throw up our hands in despair and say, I can't do that, help us to remember that nothing is impossible with God. And So when you command us something, we say, I can't do that. That's the deep end of the pool. That's too big for me. Help us say, but Lord, you could do that through me. And take my life and let me be consecrated, set apart for your use, Lord. So when you tell us to love our enemies or um, stick with a spouse, even though they're not the most fun to be with, and, and all kinds of things that are just big, too big for us, help us to say, Lord, Help me obey you. Um, help us be like that dad who turned to you and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And help us to be like that. Oh Lord, I want to obey, and help me obey better and more consistently and give the glory to you. Lord, we really do want it to be like in the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus said, let the people watching you see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We want that. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of those around us seeing you are the best. Help us to live that, not just sing it. It's great to sing it too, but help us to live that this week. And uh, be clear to all of our friends that aren't sure where they stand with you. The only, only hope in life is to know you as our Savior, our Lord, our everything. Help us to make sure of that and tell our friends in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's do some more singing about obeying God. Trust and obey. How many other ways are there to be happy? No other way. Um, Ultimately, the only happiness comes from trusting God. Now, Satan promises 
pleasures for a season. But uh, Proverbs is very clear that Satan's pleasures come with bad, bad hangovers, sometimes life-ruining hangovers. And um, so we want to trust and obey. Uh, God's pleasures last. How long does Psalm 16 say? God's pleasures are forevermore. That's the kind of that's the kind of real pleasure you want to you want to get hold of God himself and his pleasures. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. Let us do his good will. He abides with us still and with couple of things here. Um, you, I know most of you heard, you know, our daughter Melinda was in a car accident the way back from the wedding. Was that Saturday night? I can't remember. Well, the honeymooners had a little uh, scrape up down on I-95, I guess, towards Miami. Someone just hit them from the side and just kept going. Bye-bye. I hear that there's more of that happening. People don't have insurance, and they, if it's a little scrape, they just keep going. So, uh, but they're fine, and uh, so we're, we're very thankful. I, I know that much. So, uh, great for, for that. Uh, VBS sign up. Again, we're less than a month away. We're just kind of reminding you the information's in the bulletin. You can sign up your kids. Please do that. Please do that sooner than later. That way we can get some of our stuff copied and kind of get a good idea of how many we're going to have. So that would help. So if you, again, you're dealing with other relatives or neighbors or something, get their information and uh, sign up. The information's in the bulletin. And then uh, don't forget also in the bulletin, there's at least four options of our offering this year. Um, I partly don't want to persuade you, but I also want to give you some insights as well. So uh, there's the Sira ministry. We have given to them quite substantially lately. So that's the pro-life ministry. So there's a, the big one there. The Rodriguez family, which is uh, Jorge and Amy Rodriguez, um, the sister of uh, Walters. They used to be here. Anybody remember the Walters? Okay. And, um, but we've given to them, and they're on, a, 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 let me see, every quarter we, we give to them. And that's okay, just letting you know. The Tim Tebow Foundation, we're going to we're going to show a little clip this uh, Sunday, just some information about the Tim Tebow Foundation, particularly dealing with human trafficking. It's far worse than any of us re realize. 
and the Tim Tebow Foundation has been doing great things and uh, homes, safe homes and rescuing people along with other groups that he's combined with. And then the week after, uh, I'm gonna show about a five minute video of a story of, I think the girl's name is Ellie, uh, that will be after we dismiss the younger kids and we'll give a warning. There's some stuff in there. It's not like terrible, terrible or sexual or anything like that but just some rough going on there, you know, so I might give parents an option to have their kids go out, but, but we, we need to see that. Again, it's not, it's not bad, but so you can do what you want with that. So we're, we're hoping in a couple of weeks to vote money to the foundation anyway. So those things are some things that we've already given to or are planning, planning to give to. And then the Camp Good News, and that was brought up because our school field trip of the last day, of, not last day, but our end of the year school field trip, they went to Camp Good News. And some of the teachers said, you know what, it's nearby, they minister to kids all the time, and they, it's kind of run down. And we can help with some finances and getting some, so getting some things, helping them out a little ways. And so that's a good thing, be thinking about that. So we're going to let you give some input to us. Sunday will be the last day, and then we'll get with the BBS workers, okay? So, so get, get us that information if you will, all right? No First Sunday Fellowship this week because we've been doing a lot of eating lately, maybe more than normal. I don't know. How you feeling? Pretty good. How many are hungry right now? Okay. All right, a couple of you, okay. So no First Sunday Fellowship this week, all right? Uh, health issues and more. Rachel Moore is due today, wasn't it today? So she's got about four and a half, four and three quarters hours to go. Uh, if you hear Shane run out the door, uh, they're gone, bye. So we're hoping that baby. Now, did you go in the last few days or the end of last week to the doctor? Usually you do like the last week or something. Uh-huh, okay. And they, there's, uh, are, what are they telling you? Anything new? Yep. Okay. Any old time. Well, okay. Well, we're going to give her a couple of days. All right. So, no, re really be, pra be praying for that. Hopefully you w have been. Uh, Sandy Bloodsworth. Oh, oh, my goodness. Sandy. What's her last name now? Register. Register has had some blood work <laughs> uh, issues today. I guess it was. Sandy bl with blood work issues and so uh, they have to do some things with that, and it may delay her knee surgery, and so we'll have that in the bulletin Sunday, but uh, you know, that's kind of all you need to know, I guess, at this point. Anything you want to add there, uh, uh, Becky? Becky Bloodsworth? Oh, oh, sorry. There, there might be some internal bleeding, so. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you <laughs> Pay attention, you know. Okay, so be praying for that, all right? Um, be, pay attention to that. And then uh, my mother-in-law, Sarah, went into the hospital Sunday night with just some blood, uh, blood pressure issues. It just really, she forgot to take her medicine, and that just, you know, it, it does things to you. And so they've tried to get some different medicine, so she's going to be taking that. She came home yesterday. Um, it, she wasn't in good shape Sunday night, but thankfully um, somebody called the house and checked on her. It was Cynthia, and... Uh, so we called 911 and got her transported, but she's better. She's up and around like she was before. Blood pressure matters, okay, if you didn't know that. And then the Brabham's, uh, uh, George started his treatments today. So Cynthia was telling me, and I guess I didn't really, he did chemo, and then he's kind of do radiation the same day today. Is that what you were told? I don't know if I've heard of that before. But uh, so he's starting that because of the, the cancer on his uh, esophagus or something like that. So we got some sickness and health needs along the way, and keep those in your uh, prayers, if you will. And as I do once in a while, just to make a couple of comments so, um, about um, what's going on in Israel. Spain, Ireland, and Norway recently declared their plans to recognize the state of Palestine. Now that goes against my thinking, probably yours too. We need to recognize Palestine as a state. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said they're doing so is is as if they are handing out a reward for terrorism. I believe that. And I, again, I've really appreciated Benjamin Netanyahu as a leader. Uh, in my book, he goes down as one of the greatest in history. He's withstood tremendous pressure from all sorts of uh, governments, including the United States. And I, and, and I think he's truthful. Uh, by the way, he was accused of, uh, where, where, where did I hear this recently? Give me a second to get it. Uh, Rashida Tlaib is a very aggressive anti-Semitic congresswoman uh, in, in America, 
And I think that in and of itself is terrible uh, how anti-Semitic she is. But she gave a speech recently in a, gr a crowd of people, Palestinians, and very uh, pro-Palestinian, um, you know, accused uh, Netanyahu of genocide. Uh, he's a genocidal maniac. And then she was uh, uh, tearing down Biden, um, which, you know, that's not totally bad from my perspective, but on this issue, I disagree, but because he, he wouldn't demand a ceasefire from, uh, against Israel uh, that would be against uh, Hamas and Gaza. So there's, again, there's big issues here going on. Um, so, uh, and by the way, some other senator trying to call for her removal from Congress, in my opinion, that needs to happen. She, 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 that group that she spoke to is supported by a known terrorist. The United States has declared the group a, ter a terrorist group, and they funded this event, and she's been very outspoken about Palestine, and uh, I don't see any reason why somebody like that should be a, a United States senator. I think that's her position. But anyway, Netanyahu said this, 80% of the Palestinians in the West Bank support the terrible massacre of October 7th. One of the things that we've said like early on in the beginning, well, these are just a few people that did this terror act, you know, in October the 7th and against the civilians in Israel where 1,200 people got massacred. Well, as they started to research that, they found that that's not true. A large percentage of the people in Palestine and in Gaza are supportive of what uh, the Hamas did. That kind of changes things a little bit. Now, am I for just blowing people off the map? No, but you've got to support, you know, uh, to fight against this. So back to the quote to Benjamin Netanyahu. This evil must not be given a country. It will be a terror state. That's what they've done right along. What makes us think they're going to change? It will try to repeat the October 7th massacre, and we will not agree to that. A reward for terrorism will not bring peace, and it will not stop us from defeating Hamas either. And I just want to tell you, again, maybe this is too political for some of you, and uh, I apologize not for saying it, but that, that you're not so tuned in, and I, I wish you would be. But um, when, when anybody says what we're striving for is a two-state solution, they're crazy. They don't know what they're talking about. The Palestinians do not want a two-state solution. They don't want to sit, uh, uh, eat, uh, live side by side with Israel. And that's why from the get-go, they're saying they want to destroy Israel. That's all there is to it. They want to destroy Israel, wipe them off the map, sorry. Um, and uh, that's why they have sayings such as, from the river to the sea, let Palestine be free. They want to conquer the territory from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. Well, that's all of Israel. They do not want a two-state solution. And so this is what people want to say is happening or that they want to strive for, but it will not happen, okay? So my point there ultimately is uh, but to pray for Israel, okay? So um, the fly here, Greg, we better pray that away before you start preaching or that it goes down your throat the first couple of sentences of your sermon. Now we can get over it. So, all right, I think that's it for now, I think. All right, well, in a messy world, dark world like this we need to pray oh lord uh, speak to us through your word and help our lives to stand out as different and full of hope the only true hope is in the lord and so i'm going to sing this wonderful prayer speak oh lord through your word speak oh lord as we come to you to receive
that's missing to our classes. Uh, several did help the Walters move today. I won't mention names, I guess, but anyway, had a group over there loading up a trailer and a truck, and then they got up to Live Oak, and uh, I think Greg was up there working on the house anyway. He helped them unload. Then they came back, and a few were over there helping them load up a second load and, and take it easy back there. You all right? All right, that's good. So pray for them. But uh, how many of you love to move? If you, should have, if you do, you should have been over there. It's just not any fun. And uh, so just pray for them, getting situated and moving and taking on a new ministry and things of that nature. And pray for us. Um, I will give you just a brief, really brief update. We, we had, we've had a couple of people that were interested in the principal's job, and about 10 or 12 days ago, one backed out, and then uh, Monday, another one backed out. So, uh, you know, it's the Lord's school. Um, I'm reminding them of that. I mean, um, so we kind of have an agreement. I'll do my best, but it, it's going to be up to him. So, again, we plan to open. We plan to function. The teachers know what they're doing, and uh, we're going to get her going. So that's, I'm, I'm thankful for that, too. All right, Greg? We're going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 5, uh, starting at verse uh, 43. I'm saying that more for uh, Daniel's sake than everyone else's, uh, but um, I like starting off in prayer, so let's pray. <sighs> Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for um, the challenges of this sermon that you gave. I ask God you help us. Um, to learn and grow from this time. And uh, it, it will be your words and not mine. And we thank you and we praise you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. We are going to be, uh, I'm going to read 43 and 44. It says this, You have heard that it is said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies, bless those who curse you, do good to those who hate you, and pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. So there was a saying about um, you're supposed to love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Why would there be a saying like that? I mean, I mean all honesty, it kind of comes naturally. Right. But but I think what it was, was, you know, especially in those times, things were more uh, they weren't more, but they, they probably were more obviously tribal. I mean, you were always at war and you better think of the, the, the guy that you're going to be warring against with some hostility, because if you're like, well, I kind of like him, it's going to be harder to kill him. You know, I mean, it, it, you know, if, if you're in war, you have to be desensitized towards the, your enemy to be able to kill them faster, especially when it's in hand-to-hand -hand combat. I mean, that's part of what the, the military has to do to soldiers. It's, it's not, you know, it, it, and, it, and I think it probably happened even more so than uh, then. And if you don't get desensitized, they'll kill you first because they view you as the enemy more. Um. Uh, I was uh, teaching science school uh, a couple weeks back, and I, and I uh, being Greg, I said, uh, I don't like Im impregatory prayers because uh, I don't think of anyone as my enemy. And then uh, Jeff Lopez came to me afterwards, and he, and he rebuked me because he's like, oh, Greg, you should think of this person as an enemy and that person as an enemy. And I got, you know, and there was some truth to it. And, um, um, and the world says, and, and we say, you know, you should never hate anyone. Um, but, and that's, well, that's, that's doable. But that's not what it's saying here. It says, it doesn't say don't hate your enemy. It says love your enemy. Which goes back to what's the, the all these, um, the, the um, section of the, the Sermon on the Mount where he says, it used to say, but now I say, all those are there so you know I need Jesus. I can't do it on my own. Um, and, and that is, I think, one of the main themes of the whole Sermon on the Mount. 
Now, let's first start off with who is your neighbor? Well, your neighbor is, well, you could, you know, the, the simple thing is, it's the person that lives near to you. My neighbor is Tommy Moore, right? I got a good neighbor. Now, um, uh, on, on, you know, talk about lovable. One time, uh, my girls, they were, they were traumatized about something. I don't know. Uh, I, I must have got hurt or something like that. And they're like, Dad, what would happen if, if we're at the house and you get hurt and we need help and we don't know what to do? And, da, 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 and, they, and they're, they're acting all panicked. And it's like, you walk next door to Tommy. And they went, oh, okay. And I'm like, and if that doesn't work, you go two more houses down and you go to Christie and Lance. And they're like, oh, yeah. And if you're really desperate, you go down the street to the sissies. I mean, you, you got to, you know, they're like, and they're like, yeah, okay. And they're all breathing easy. I'm like, okay, you're all good now. You're good now. We, we got neighbors that, that are easy to love. They're people that live near. They're, they're part of the same tribe for sure. I mean, I, my kids, I mean, they call half the people that are in this church aunt and uncle and cousin. And I mean, I, you know, my mom comes here. She's like, wait a minute. How, how many of these people are really your, your aunts and uncles? I, I, you know, but, but they're, you know, they, they look like at, at everyone like they're they're part of their family um and and but it's also similar thoughts and similar a similar lifestyle well, um i heard a podcaster but a newscaster um saying one of the reasons why uh seeing ukraine getting bombed is so shocking to people more so than when we watch you know, sh uh, bombs in, in, in gaza or afghanistan is because ukraine they're Building structures look like something that could be here. You're seeing a mall that looks like something I could have, you know, gone to last week or whatever, and then it's blown to bits. You know, um, when you see like the little huts, you know, or or or, or the the different lifestyle of in, in uh, other countries, and it gets blown up, and, and it's a, um, it's less shocking. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm just saying there's a connection with someone that has a similar lifestyle, okay? So, you know, th this is easy. Okay, those are the easy ones to, to love. But then it says, but who is our enemy? It's the opposite. It's someone that, that is far away. It is someone who is not part of the same tribe. Um, you know, uh, I looked up the, the dictionary uh, of enemy, and it says, it's someone that is opposed to. It's someone that is hostile to. It's someone who harms or weakens you. Um, I was going to have my mom, I was going to call my mom up and ask her how to say this in Latin. It's, it's in amicus, which means not friend. But it's way more than not friend. It's someone that's trying to hurt you. It's, it's people. Look at these things that it says about these people. It says that they, they curse you. They hate you. They're spiteful. They use uh, you. They persecute you. It's not just that they're not a friend. They're doing you completely wrong. They're, not only that, they're doing the things you hate. Um, uh, every day, I, 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 one of the podcasts, I, I listen to podcasts. I, it's because you know I'm painting or whatever, and a lot of times I got my headset on and I listen to things. And one of my listen to is, uh, and I strongly suggest it's the word worldview in five minutes, and um, it's it's a uh, it's a Christian podcast, and in five minutes it tells you what's going on in the Christian world. And every day it's some Christian has been killed, some Christian has been martyred. I mean, uh, and uh, last uh, it was uh, Sunday. There was a, a missionary family in Haiti that was killed. And I was talking to Chris uh, Redmond, and he's like, Greg, uh, did you hear about the missionaries? He's like, I was really scared, you know, because I thought maybe it would be Sherry or the people that are working for Sherry, but then I found out it wasn't them. Whew. Like, wow, Chris, if you don't know them, you don't care. <laughs> um, but, you know, there is some truth to that. I mean, I... Uh, uh, when, when there are people that they're persecuting, or the people that I'm connected to, if it's you, or worse yet, my girls, I don't know why. Look, someone picks on Brother Rick. I'm like, I, I, it, it bothers me. It, I don't like it. 
but someone picks on Caitlin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get mad. It's different. I'm, I'm just, it, it, you know, it, there's a higher level of protection. I mean, it, cause for, for a, a girl, a woman, it, it, there's a difference, especially because I saw her the day she was born. You know, it, there's a connection there, you know? Right, you know? And uh, so there, there's a connection. But I mean, like, um, uh, they remember, uh, it was, um, whew, I forgot her name, Michelle Obama. Uh, save our, uh, hashtag, bring back our girls. It was a bunch of girls in, um, it was Nigeria. In Nigeria, there was a bunch of girls that were taken from, uh, they went into this one city and they took a whole bunch of girls. And everyone was like, oh yeah, bring back our girls. But no one talked about why those girls were taken. It was in, at that point, the area that they were in was Muslim and the girls that were taken were Christians. And part of Christian families. And those girls never were brought back. Everyone liked the hashtag. It was really cool. You know, people were walking around with hashtag, bring back our girls. Did nothing for the girls. See, you got a little hostile about that. So, but, okay, the people that persecute you, the people that hate you. Um, you, look, you've heard me say this, and if you haven't, uh, you know, the difference between, you know, there's people that call themselves new atheists. Uh, old atheists said, you cannot know that it, it, there is a God. New atheist says that you believe that there is a God, it hurts the rest of humanity. They hate you, and they say your Christianity hurts them. Um, and... And let's be honest, the, the Muslims say, we will get those of the Saturday, and then we will get those on Sunday. In other words, we're going to get the Jews, and then we're going to get the Christians. They hate us. Um, oh, am I, you know what else? The attack on gender and family, manhood, it is a roundabout way of attacking Christianity. They're attacking family because they hate that family points people to God. Because a good family is a picture of Jesus and the church. And they hate that. They hate that you have good marriages. They hate all of it. And they hate us. Um, and it says they, 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 um, they, they use us spitefully. You know, people love to use the Christian worldview to point at Christians and tell them they're doing wrong. If there was no Christianity, women would be treated horribly. Sorry, but it's true. Because any other country that do, is true atheist or is Muslim, women aren't allowed to drive. I mean, they, get, they, they, can, you, they look like little ninjas. With the, you can only see their eyes, you know what I'm saying? I mean, they're, 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 they're not able to, to do anything. They're, it's, it's, it's a horrible treatment. The reason why they're treated better in the United States is because there's a Judeo-Christian ethic that started it off. And then people take that Judeo-Christian ethic and point at you and say, um, you're not a good Christian because you don't let the women kill their children. And oh, uh, they, they're using it. They're, um, um, oh, I had this one guy. Daniel, we talked about this guy. Um, uh, I built a deck for a guy. He said he wanted an 8-foot by 10-foot deck. I built him the deck. Then he says, I wanted it to be 9-foot by 12-foot. I was like, but that's not what you asked for. And that's not what you're going to pay me for. And then he said there was one other thing wrong, and he, and he, and he, 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 uh, text, he emailed me. I want the deck to be like it was built by Jesus. And I said, you can't afford Jesus. I was like, I'm cheaper than him. You can afford me. But he would use my Christianity. He used my Christianity against me. It made me feel bad. And then I was, you know, well, I, I didn't change the deck. I couldn't add on to the deck because it was already built. But I did other things much more cheap because 
you know, he was using my, he used it against me. Um, uh, and, 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 uh, oh, by the way, uh, this section here, <laughs> this section right here talking about loving your enemies is um, actually before and intertwined with the, the last section of verses that, that we, uh, I went through last week about not retaliating. The sermon that <clears throat> is not on the live stream anymore because uh, I, might have, I might have gone a little too far on showing that I needed Jesus. And, or I definitely went too far showing I needed Jesus. Um, and uh, proves even more that loving your enemies connects to, well, the people that I, I am irritated by the most, a.k.a. Uh, government officials or someone that, that is forcing things on me. And I, I won't get into all that because I want to keep this sermon. Um, and, and it says, those who curse you. I heard a, um, a comedian recently um, who said, and he was obviously not a Christian. He was very funny. And he said, no one makes fun of Muslims. And he said, you know why? Because they blow things up. And he said, Christians, you should learn something here. You blow up a couple things, and they'll stop making fun of you. Now, I'm 100% saying that is not what we're supposed to do. But maybe we could blow their mind by showing them love when they hate and curse us and everything else. says this um oh yeah put here um this this uh, tells us to love and bless and pray and do good um are you a friend with the enemies and i don't mean just drive by evangelism now i think there's a good point on drive by evangelism and i'll talk about it oh wait all right side note one of my favorite stories i just thought about it uh when i was working on this sermon uh this is a secondhand story but my professor of evangelism at Word of Life, he was telling us a story about how he would give out tracts, right? And then he, he wanted to be able to throw tracts out the window, right? So, but he found out that they just fluttered, right? So he rolled them up really tight, and then he wrapped them in saran wrap. Sounds like something your dad would do, huh, Lance? <laughs> Except he made a mistake. He used red saran wrap so they wouldn't lose it, Right? So you think about something about this long, real skinny, red. What's that look like? Firecracker. So he's driving down the road throwing these things at people, right? And he was telling the story about how he saw this one guy that looked like he was on the side of the road underneath his truck, working on his truck, and he threw one of those out the window, and it lands right next to the guy. He thought it was a great idea. He's like, I'm going to go back to that guy tomorrow. Well, he, the next day he goes to the door, knocks on the door. The guy opens the door. He's got this big old welt on his head because the guy freaked out because he thought he threw a firecracker at him. He smacks his head trying to get out of the, the truck. And he still was able to lead the guy to the Lord, which was an awesome story. Really cool guy. But <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you know what? On that note. Uh, you guys, anyone know who Penn Gillette is? He's a, a magician. I used to do, uh, never, uh, okay. Um, Penn Gillette is, is a fantastic magician. Um, he's also an extremely outspoken atheist. And uh, there's a YouTube on it. And if you look it up, uh, Penn Gillette with Christians, I think. Uh, or, or, with, uh, or um, And he was talking about how he, he had done a magic show. And often he would go and talk to people afterwards. And after he did it, um, this guy who knew he was an atheist waited, talked to him, and then gave him a Bible. And Pendulette did this video afterwards. It was this, I, I thought about actually projecting it, but he looks so stinking scary because he, he's usually got a ponytail, but he didn't have his ponytail, so his hair's just all disheveled and he looked spooky. But he was talking about it and he said, I don't respect a Christian who says they believe what they believe and they don't proselytize if they don't give the gospel. He said, how much do you hate me if you won't tell me the truth that you believe? 
If you believe that and you don't tell me that, you hate me. So the first thing you've got to do, you know, look, I'm not saying that it has to be the first thing. By the way, uh, well, we'll get into it. The first thing you need to realize is at some point to show love, you have to give the gospel to the world. Now, in his story, he talked about how that guy was gentle with him and how he waited patiently and how he listened to him and how he shook his hand and was showed kindness. It wasn't. Now, there, there's times that it's a drive-by evangelism where you throw tracks and give the gospel at the laundromat. But sometimes it, it, it's even better is if we actually listen to the person and show a connection to them and show love. And he, he said, look, I am still, he said, I still believe there is no God. He's like, but I believe that is a good man. And his words meant something to me. Wow. Um, so, oh, and, he, and, the, and that Christian did it with no hate and no wagging his finger at him and yelling at him and showing hatred. He showed love. So are you a friend with an atheist, a Muslim, a, a Democrat, a homosexual, a drag queen, or anyone else that's proud of anything that we disagree with. Now, um, how does this work with, you know, you're supposed to be um, a friends with the unsaved world, with the, the, the enemy, how does that work with, with 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 17, it's, you know, where it says, Come out from among them and be ye separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. That verse is, was thrown at me all the time. I, when I was a kid, the church I went to believed in secondary separation. Okay? So um, I'll use Becky. She's in front of me. Okay? They would say, Becky is friends with uh, um, Brother Rick, and Brother Rick's a bad guy. I can't be friends with Becky, because she's friends with Brother Rick. It's called secondary separation. You can't be friends with anyone if that's what you do. Because it's only six steps, and I'm, and I'm friends with Kevin Bacon. You know what I'm saying? I mean, there's seven steps to Kevin Bacon. I don't know if you ever heard that saying, but everyone has a connection to someone. But, but here's the thing. That, that, those verses, um, oh, by the way, that's why... The, um, the Amish don't have lights because they're trying to have separation. It doesn't, that's not what it's talking about. It's the separation. The word separate means separate from sin. It's righteousness, set apart. It's not being not talking to people. It means don't doing their sin. And, uh, you know, further on, or earlier on, in verse 14, it says, the, the, do not be unequally yoked. There's a, there is a closeness that is reserved for God's family. I have friends that are not Christians, that are proud of their lifestyle. So, I mean, I can, you know, like uh, gay friends or whatever else. I don't think I have any drag queen friends, but that's okay. Maybe I do. I don't know. Um, uh, but I, I have friends that, but it's, I'm closer to y'all. There is a, look, um, I have friends even here that I'm very close to, but I'm still closer to my family, my, my wife, Right? Because you're, there's a closeness to more to your family. You're my family. The, the unsaved world, the enemy's not. So I do have a closeness with them. I, I show kindness and show love to them, but I'm going to be even closer to you. So there, there is a difference. And then, and, um, and then in verse 12 it says, um, the reason why he's telling them is because of their own af uh, affections. What it's talking about is you need to be separate because you don't need to be, you've got to be careful that you're not dragged down. That they don't get you to do what's, what's wrong. So you have to, there is a, a separation uh, um, in the world and not of the world. You know, that kind of concept. 
We're supposed to be there. But, that, but some people, even when they say in the world but not of the world, they say, I'm in the world, I'll walk through it. But I have no affection or connection or love for the world. No, no, we're still supposed to love them. Um, and and uh, the last thing, it says, do good. You know, you know even, even in your job, you know, whatever the job is, everything from doing electric to, you know, engineering, a civil engineer, whatever it is, you know, uh, whatever it is, you do it to the best of your ability. And that is part of the showing of love for them. But it's also a, a glorifying of God. And going all the way back to what I said about us blowing their minds, you know, if we show love to them, maybe they will, for lack of better terms, change teams. Uh, verse uh, uh, 45 says this. Um, now, that you may be sons of your Father in heaven, for he has made his Son rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. Um, you know, the, the old saying, why do uh, good things happen to bad people? It's not an easy question, but, but it is, you know, one, we're all bad. We're all bad. You know, uh, so don't think, oh, bad, uh, good things happen to that guy. Well, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's, it's, uh, um, <laughs> it is, you, we all deserve that bad. Um, and the second thing is, God can do whatever he wants. Who are you to ask him what he's doing and what he's up to? If he, if he wants to do it. But you know what? The third thing that comes to my mind is there is a difference. I've gone through some times that I felt were rough, right? But I still had that sweetness, that connection. I could still talk to Jesus as it's going on. And why do bad things happen to good people? It's already, there's none that are really good. God can do whatever he wants. There is... Um, there is a difference. He treats, you know, there is a difference in the family. Remember, just like with us. But also, there's one other uh, reason why do, uh, bad things happen to good people. Because there's a purpose. There is strength. And that God will speak to us through that. And he will show us. And show what we're made out of. And what he's done for us. Uh, Stephen Curtis Chapman, great uh, musicians, written some. Do we, we play some of it, sing some of his songs, right? I, 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 I've always liked him. Um, his son uh, backed up over his daughter. I mean, devastating, horrible event. And he was able to be on secular TV and such and be interviewed and to show what God could do for a person going through a devastating time. Verse uh, 46, it says this. Uh, they, um, sorry. Uh, for if you love those who love you, what reward have you? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? Um, it's easy to love those who love you. Um, when I moved here to Windsor, Brother Mike was here, and uh, he said, Greg, I have a, a ministry for you, the ministry of the people that no one like. So if, if, uh, when I just moved here, if I ministered to you, now you know what Brother Mike thought of you. Um, and, and, you know, it, <laughs> I enjoy you people, to be honest with you. Um, that means I have to deal with some people that I don't enjoy sometimes. I have to deal with, I have to, I have to show love to the people that I don't like as much. Um, you know, and, and there is, um, there is a, what kind of reward are you going to get if you just do that? Sissios, uh, just don't like Sissios, Caitlin. Caitlin, you're perfect for this. It's a competition. You know, she's like, oh, I got I to gotta love the people I can't stand. Come on, Caitlin, it's a, it's a competition. I know you're a Sissio. You're like, ha, ah, right? But, but we all like winning. We all like rewards. We all like, you know, com there's a reward, a reward. For loving who 
it's not as lovable. And if not, well, you're like an IRS employee. And we're not going to get into how I don't like them and how I don't want to be like them. But let me tell you something. The people really hated those people in those days because they were horrible and they were doing it for horrible purposes. They were just horrible. And he says, if you do it like that, you're no better than them. Wow, that's a slam. Um, you know what? Sometimes... Tax collectors are better than the Christians. Have you ever heard this saying? The only army that kills its wounded is the Christian army. Well, we better not be that way. We better be taking care of our wounded, and we better be loving the, the world, even the ones that hate us. Verse uh, 47 says this, And if you greet your brethren only, what do you do, uh, what do, you do more than others? Do not even the tax collectors do so? But how does this connect, you know, John, uh, uh, or uh, sorry, Second John, uh, verse 11, it says, you know, if you greet the, the people, if you give, actually, no, it says Godspeed. This is the reason, I don't know if you guys have been around me, I say Godspeed. The reason why I say Godspeed is because of that verse. Because when I preached, that was early on preaching. I think it was before I uh, was preaching here. I preached that, and I went to my dad and said, Dad, what's Godspeed? And my dad said, I don't know. But it's a good thing for some, and it's too good for others. And, and that was all he gave me, and so I went with that. And so then I was like, well, the people I love, the, the people I'm connected to, you people, I'll, you'll hear me say that to you. I'll be like, Godspeed, I, 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 I'll say that. And I make sure I don't say it to the people that aren't my Christian brothers and sisters. But so how does that connect? Because it says greet, and, and actually in the King James, it says greet on both of those. Um, actually, sorry, New King James says greet on both of those. Um, but what's the difference? Well, the difference is that the, the greets are different greets. I, had a, I put a lot of effort because my strongs was for a different... I, I had to search multi-strongs to find out that they were two different words bottom line is and one of them the greet in this is saying hey and shaking their hand the greet in second john is i hope everything goes well and i hope you have success in everything you're doing it's saying i wish success upon you you can't do that to someone who's preaching falsehood but you can say hey how you doing even smile a little Um, and again, oh, by the way, on that note, we gotta be we gotta be consistently good here when newcomers come to our church. We gotta make sure that when people come to our church, you now you people are my people that are in here. I like you. Someone new comes in here. I don't know them. I don't even know if I like them or not. You know what I'm saying? But I gotta make sure that I go and I talk to them. And there's times uh, Carrie's, you know a good friend of mine. He's always he's been a good friend of mine for a long, long time. And there's been plenty of times where I'm talking to Carrie and someone new comes in and Carrie knows Greg's going to go, sorry, Carrie. He knows I'm going to do that. I'd rather talk to Carrie than some new person or even some of the other people that are they're not as new that I know that, that want to be interacting with me. I'd rather talk to him, but the truth of the matter is I need to talk to them. And he's, he and I have an agreement. He understands that. Yeah, go, dude. Do what you got to do. Go talk to that person. And we need to, to make sure that we, uh, we as a church, that not, not just the pastors, because sometimes, you know, the pastors may be kind of scary. They, it needs to be you guys, too. You know what I'm saying? Just walking up and saying hi. Um, so make sure you do that. Uh, verse uh, 48 says this. Therefore, you shall be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. What? How, oh, uh, well, okay. What is, is it just talking about this? No. First off, that is not just talking about this section right here. That perfect part is talking about all of the, the not all of the Beatitudes or all the, of the Sermon on the Mount, but from the point where it says that Jesus fulfills the law, verse uh, 17 on. And, it, and it's talking about the, you know, uh, it said not to murder. I say don't hate. It says, you know, don't commit adultery. I say don't, don't covet. It says uh, don't uh, divorce. I say only divorce 
or, or it says divorce only, uh, or give a paper for divorce, I say give a divorce for only one reason. Uh, uh, if you swear, obey what you swear. And I say don't swear at all, just do what you say you're going to do. And an eye for, you know, the no retaliation, you know. Um, oh, I almost got that fly. Um, and then don't just love your friends, but love your enemies. Look, I already stated last week, and I stated it so powerfully, I wasn't allowed to keep the live stream on. You know, I, I stated and showed I can't do all of these. And I have, I got you guys helping me out. We can't, we can't do it. But we can try. And we can realize we need Jesus. We need Jesus. We need Jesus to take care of the sin we've done, but we need Jesus to help us get a little better and to do a better. I say, let's try to be better. There was, um, oh man, I can't remember what, it was It was someone talking to a congressman, and I, I wish I had clipped it because it was one of the best things I have ever heard. The person was talking to the congressman, again, me in government, but then the congressman was like, I did it, and the, and the person goes, sir, sir, have you ever tried being good at your job? I thought it was hilarious. You know, and look, I, I'm, you know, the poor guy was probably like, oh, man, he was probably very upset about that. But, but here's the thing. we got to try to be good at our job. We have a job as Christians to live those things. Not, not just because it's not going to get us to heaven because we fail. But you know what? It may help other people see. And it will definitely make our life better. And it will glorify God. And he's telling us to do it. So let's try to be better. Let's pray. <sighs> hey, Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you. Um, <sighs> oh, sorry. I thank you that, that you uh, um, show us what to do and, and uh, give us guidance. I ask God you help um, us to... Uh, Love our enemies. We need your help to do so. And guide us on how to do that. How to make sure that we have interaction with them and to connect and to have friends with people that are our enemies. We thank you for the things you've done and things you will do. We love you, Lord. And that's easy to do because you loved us first. In Jesus' name, amen.